Hello, my great students and viewers out there. Welcome to today's online teaching from St. Charles College on Nature. I am your teacher, Okeru Yukeria, from Basic Technology Department. In today's discussion, we are going to discuss metal joining. But before we go on, let's look at the specific objectives. By the end of the lesson, you students are expected to perform the following tasks. One, list various methods of joining metals. Two, explain welding and reverting. Three, define soldering. Four, list and explain two major types of soldering. Five, explain brazing. Six, Mention and explain tools used in soldering. Now, let's go into the lesson proper. Methods of joining metals. Metals, like we discussed in the other day, can be joined in so many ways. This joining can be permanent or temporary. These are some of methods of joining metal pieces together. Soldering, brazing, Reverting, welding, use of mechanical fasteners such as bolts and knots. This is the bolt and this is the knot. You can use it to join metal pieces together. Welding. Welding is the process of joining two metal pieces together using high temperature to melt and join two metal parts. In welding, filler rod is often used, and the flame for use in welding is flame from oxoacetylene gas. This flame is used to melt metal pieces. In welding, the two metals which you will join must be similar. For example, copper cannot be welded to steel because two of them are not similar. We have different types of welding, which includes spot welding, metal inert gas, tungsten inert gas. The next method of joining metals together is reverting. Reverting is used when it is required to connect permanently two or more pieces of heavy section metals. Reverting is used in heavy engineering work, such as in bridge construction. In bridge construction, when you need to join metal pieces together, the type of joints required there are supposed to be permanent joints, and it's supposed to be very, very strong because of the duty this bridge is expected to perform. Because of that, reverting is used in bridge construction. Now let's go into soldering. We are going to pay more attention in soldering. Soldering is a process of joining metal surface together with the use of an alloy called solder, which has a lower melting point than the metal being joined. In your JSS one, you learned about alloy, where you are told that an alloy is a mixture of two or more metals together. So solder, which is used in soldering, is an alloy. And in soldering, we normally use an alloy of tin and the lead. That is a metal that is made up of tin and the ledge. We have two major types of soldering. We have soft soldering and the hard soldering. Which one is soft soldering? Soft soldering is a process of joining tin metals together. It makes use of low temperature solder. In soft soldering, the temperature of about 230 degrees centigrade is used. Soft soldering is used in soldering of wire terminals, such as in radios, televisions, phones, and other electrical work. It is used where strength is not paramount. So the normally used in soldering is an alloy of tin and the ledge. That is the type of solder which we normally use in soft air soldering. Now let's look at another type of soldering. The one we call hard soldering. If you don't call it hard soldering, you can call it silver soldering. Hard soldering.
soldering creates a stronger bond when you compare it to soft soldering. And it involves higher temperature to melt the solder material. This material is normally brass, brass or silver and requires the use of blowtorch to melt. The metal being bounded, known as base metal, that is the metal which you want to join. It is the one we call base metal. It is heated to a point at which the brass or silver solder melts, creating a strong joint at its cools. And because of this silver solder that is used in hard soldering, that is why this hard soldering is also called silver soldering. What are the uses of hard soldering? Hard soldering is quite different from soft soldering. Like I told you initially that soft soldering is used where strength is not paramount. But in hard soldering, it is used in joining hard metals. It is also used for joining where hard joints is needed and where the joints will be subject to greater heat than the melting point of soft soda. Brazing is carried out as much, at much higher temperature. Brazing is similar to hard soldering because the pieces of metal being bounded together are heated but not melted during the bonding process. Once you have the base metals, that is the major metal which you want to join together, you place the soldering material called brazing filler. This brazing filler metal, you place it between the surface which you want to join. It instantly melts. The molten filler materials bind the joint between the base metals through a process which we call capillary action. Now let's go into tools used for soldering. These are some of the tools used in soldering. They include the following. Soldering iron. If you don't call it soldering iron, you can equally call it soldering beads. The solder, flux, source of heat. This source of heat may be stove, it may be electricity, it may be blow lamp. It depends on the type of soldering iron which you are using. If you are using manual soldering iron, stove or blow lamp may be source of your heat. But if you are using electrical soldering, electricity is a source of heat. And the last one is a, the one we call emery, emery cloth, which is a, an abrasive. This abrasive is used to clean off excess solder after soldering. Now let's discuss soldering beads. Like I told you initially, that this soldering bead is often called soldering iron. This soldering iron has important parts. The important part of the soldering bead is the hedge, which is made of copper. Why is it made of copper? It is of, well, so, uh, for so many reasons. One, because copper is a good conductor of heat. When you want to use the soldering bead, you must first of all thin the soldering bead. What is thinning in soldering? Thinning simply means cutting the points of the bead with solder. You just get a little quantity of solder and use it to cover the bead of the soldering iron. Thinning is very, very important because copper, when heated, will become coated with a film of oxide. This film of oxide will reduce the performance of the solder. The oxide will prevent the solder from making contact with the copper itself. If you look at the diagram below, you will see a sample of soldering iron. That one is the electric soldering iron. It is a stress soldering iron. You can see the cord. The cord, you use it to connect it to the source of heat. In this case, you connect it to electricity. The electricity will supply the heat, and the heat will heat up the bit. When the bit is heated up, you can now use it to solder your materials. I told you that soldering bit is made of copper. Why is this soldering bit made of copper? There are so many reasons why the soldering bits are made of copper. What are the reasons? One. Copper is an excellent conductor of heat. If you compare copper to other metals, 
you will know that copper conducts heat faster than the other metals. Soda and copper has a great affinity. That is the second reason. Soda and copper has great affinity. What does that mean? That is, copper picks up soda easily when the soda is in its molten state. Number third reason, copper retains its heat until brought into contact with other metals. There are some metals which cannot retain heat when you compare them to copper. Now we have different types of soldering beads. We have basically two types of soldering beads, the straight soldering bead and the hatchet soldering bead. These straight soldering beads and hatchet soldering beads may be manual, it may be electrical. When the source of heat is from stove or from blow lamp, it is called manual soldering bead. But when the source of heat is from electricity, it is called electrical soldering bead. The stress soldering bead is used for general work and for getting into restricted places. While the hatchet soldering bead is made for making long joints because of its blade-like edge, it is also used for soldering in grooves. Grooves means hole. You can use it to solder when there is need to connect curves together. Another material which we are going to discuss is the solder itself. If you have been to radio mechanic workshop, you will see them using this solder and the soldering iron to join terminals together because strength is not needed. In that one, they are using soft solder. So what is solder? Solder is the material used in its molding state for the joining of metals. The best solda is an alloy or metal made of lead and uh, tin. Solda must have a lower melting point than the metals to be joined so that they can melt at about 230 degrees centigrade. This type of solda, the one you are seeing at the screen now, is the one we call soft solda. This one is an alloy of lead and uh, tin. Like I said initially, it is mainly used when you want to carry out soft soldering, like when you want to join terminals in television, our phones, our radios. That is when you use this type of uh, solder. If you want to carry out hard soldering or silver soldering, you will not use this solder that is an alloy of lead and the tin. Flux for soldering. What is a flux? Flux is the substance applied on metals to be joined so that the surface of the metal can be cleaned. Flux cleans the metal and helps the solder to flow very well. Flux makes metal surface chemically clean and stop corrosion, permitting the solder to stick tightly to produce a very good joint. Some of the examples of flux used in soldering are pure amber oil. You can equally use olive oil. You can use candle grease. Floss is also used in brazing. Like brazing is an example of a, it, you may call it soldering, but that one requires a very high temperature of about 450 degrees centigrade. Floss, which we use in brazing, is the one we call burras. Again, floss used in brazing is one, the floss we call burras. It should be noted that after soldering, the articles must be washed with soap to stop the acid in the floss from eating the metal. By so doing, you will reduce the rate at which your metal will be attacked by the acid that is contained in the floss. That is where we come to an end today's lesson. But before we go, I would like to evaluate you with the following questions. One, list five methods of joining metal pieces together. Two, explain welding and reverting. Three, what is soldering? Four, list and explain two major types of soldering. Five, list any four tools used in soldering. Six, State two major reasons 
Why soldering iron? That is the beat. It's made of a uh, copper. Seven. Floss is used. Floss used in brazing is called dash. What do we call the type of floss we use in brazing? I hope you enjoyed the lesson, and I hope you are staying safe. Please answer these questions and send it to my private WhatsApp number: zero eight zero three seven five five eight seven two three. Thank you for listening. Bye for now.